this figure here is such a big pain in the butt to deal with. I mean, how do we even make this thing stand without her base? Hi everyone, I'm Steven from X Kurogane and today we'll be looking at the photography process of Good Smile Company's 1x7 scale Gen Duck from Fate Apple Crip huh? or Fate Grand Order since, since she appeared in both. Alright, so this giant drama you're looking at here is what I built over the past two weeks just to photograph this one figure. And it is mostly handmade, right? Only the windows and the floor tiles are 3D printed. For everything else, the walls and the steps, the stair itself, the stairs itself, are uh, handmade. While well, the pillars were, they were made of polystone, which were, uh, which they were casted. These were very old parts. I had them since last year, over the past year, but never really used them until now. I had this figure in hand for the past five or six months. I received her since last June, late May late May last year, but I didn't really know what to do with her because of her pose and her size. Undoubtedly, she is my favourite Gen Duck figure, right? There are so many versions out there and this one by Goodsmart is my favourite version in terms of both quality and, and the pose. The problem is with such a pose where you can say, you can call it a dynamic pose and action pose where she is running or dashing forward, the figure is very unbalanced in terms of weight distribution. Which is why she is supported with a metal pack in her original base. But in a setup like this, how are you going to make her stand without her base? And the answer would be a combination of both my own pack, which is built into the base, a single plastic pack which I made, and I even used a, used a fishing thread, which I'll demonstrate later. Firstly, I would like to go through the construction process of this diorama. These pizza shaped tiles were directly 3D printed. I had to make a lot of calculations, you know, those real mathematical calculations 2 pi r pi r square to calculate the circumference of a circle, a curve, and the diameter, everything, especially the circumference. And we are just going to leave the windows aside first. So I would cut, uh, I would cut blocks of styrofoam using the floor tiles that I printed as a guide to their shape. And I would repeat it for about 6 pieces of floor tiles. I have this giant cylindrical styrofoam block, which is exactly a semicircle, a half circle, which I use as a guideline for this specific drama on how to curve my floor tiles. The flight of stairs, right? Initially, I wanted to use that large cylindrical pillar or wall right in the middle of the drama. But a plain wall, a plain curved wall would look pretty boring to me, which later I decided to remove it. I would leave some space behind so that I can glue them into a flight of stairs. After that, I would refine the curved sides, right? I would slowly slice it off bit by bit until it is nicely curved. Which later I will build a curved brick wall along the outer circumference of the stairs, piece by piece. So yeah, now we are looking at the wall building process, which is pretty much exactly like building a real wall except with different materials. I cut a large, a large sheet of styrofoam into small pieces of bricks and literally cement them one piece by one with silicone glue. And of course, I took into account the height of the windows. Well, the window down here will be lower, and then as you go further up, it will, place high, it will be placed higher. I took into account everything. After I'm done building the wall to a satisfactory height, then I would, carve, I would just cement the entire surface of the wall with dental plaster, or also known as plaster of Paris. A very cheap material, very hard after it has set, but also fragile when it is in thin pieces, which is ideal in this situation because I would want to create some cracks on the wall later. After the plaster has set, which takes over an hour or one and a half hour, I would intentionally break the plaster by applying pressure with my own hands 
or you can smash it with a hammer or anything, you know, just spread, just compress it and break it until cracks appear. Some pieces will fall off and I would just glue the pieces back on the wall so that we have nice cracks. And what I would use is a gap filler this, right? So this is basically construction material, a latex filler. Where you just apply it along the cracks and then every single fragment that fell off after you compress it, you just put it right there and it will, glue right, right, it will be glued back after the material sets. So it's pretty simple, very laborious task, but very simple. Build the wall, build the floors, cement everything up, and it will go straight for painting. And that's about it. It sounds pretty simple, but it took me almost a couple of weeks, right? Because after I spray painted the whole thing, I still had to use hand brush methods to detail it, to do weathering shading. So these are the paints I used for spray, paint, spray painting the walls of this structure, they are acrylic based, water based, which has less corrosive properties compared to lacquer based paint, especially on styrofoam. And I would use the typical Tamiya or Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color paints for the touch ups, the shading, weathering of the walls on the cracks, right, just to add more detail to the scene. When it comes to the photography process, I'm photographing this under a balcony during a very hot afternoon, just like right now. So. Any form of lighting literally is pretty useless, even if I set up lamps or lights, right? The lights will not have any dramatic effect on the setup. I would have loved to shoot this during at night in a dark studio, but to light up a very large set like this would be pretty difficult. So my decision was to use a larger than usual light bulb, a 200 watt giant bulb, like this one, okay? This is a high output bulb. It's it is usually used in studio studios, right? You don't see, see people placing this in their homes. It's a very bright bulb. So I just placed one of these bulbs over there at the side window and blasted it through the window without any filters. No softbox, no diffusers, nothing. Because I want to create the illusion, uh, an impression of a very hot weather. So yeah, I'm making use of hard light, unfiltered light, no softbox, we call it hard light. Hard light is usually not really preferable in photography but but in a case like this in a setup like this one i'm going for a very specific effect so it would be a very good idea to use hot light in this case because it reflects what we would see in real life when you are standing under a very hot sun you get very bright highlights that is exactly what i wanted so if you look at john duck's armor in the final photo you can see very bright spots on her armor a reflective silver metallic armor. Normally, we wouldn't want that in photography, right? We are borderline blowing the highlights, but that is exactly what I want in this case. I'm going for the effect on purpose. And you might have been wondering, why did I use so many styrofoam blocks to cover up the scene? Because I wanted to isolate the interior of this diorama to make the insides look darker compared to outside, right? If I removed everything, if I removed everything, see, it will appear too bright, the insides will appear too bright because environmental or ambient light from the outside will just leak inside. So the overall image will look very flat, very even lighting, and the bulb, light bulb which I placed outside the window wouldn't even matter anymore. It wouldn't have much of an effect. So this is something to bear in mind. If you want to shoot a dark scene or a relatively dark scene, you need to isolate your diorama. If you don't isolate it like I do, then you will have to photograph it during at night in a dark studio setting, where the only light source are your own lamps. Now on making the figure to stand right up in this base, right? What I did was to basically make a custom pack for her foot. And I would lift her up with a fishing thread. Yeah. So I drilled a hole in the floor, inserted my own pack, and after I, uh, I plug Jen into the floor, I would keep her upright with a fishing thread. After I've adjusted the fishing thread to suit, to, to adjust her position, I would just hot glue it, hot glue the fishing thread. If you have noticed, I've removed the giant flag, Jen Dark Holes, right? And replace it with a spear, which I borrowed from a, fig a figure by Arthur. Her name is Hozoin Inshun from Hyakaryoran, one of the samurai girl. I brought the spear from her. Instead of 
putting a flag in the scene because to me the flag is a big nuisance. Uh. It ruins composition. The scene would be too heavy on one side, right? In terms of composition, it would be one, uh, heavy on one side. And this setup will not have enough space for that either. I would need to expand the walls further, which means the entire composition of the scene is altered. And it would be very expensive to make even a larger set than this one. So due to cost concerns, but other than that, the most important part is composition. You want the scene to look great. I decided to omit the flag completely. However, in one of my future projects, near future, which is Gen Dark Alter, the Avenger version of it, you can just call it the evil version if you want to, I'll be including the flag in the scene, or just for some variation. So, yeah, you can look forward to that one. That one is also a hell lot of work to be done. I'm estimating it to be ready about a month from now for that one. So without further ado, we'll move on to photographing this set. And I'll show you guys what I will do in post-processing. As usual, the first step in editing would be to import all my raw images into Adobe Lightroom. And I will do the basics. Exposure, highlights, shadows, contrast, whites and blacks, tone curve, and the HSL, hue, saturation, luminosity. That's the most important part where you can change the look of the photo just by playing with a few sliders of each individual color channel. From what you can see over here, the difference between before and after color grading is night and day. So how are you going to adjust the colors? What colors should you be going for? This is completely subjective, right? I don't have exactly a guide. I just know I have a rough idea of what colors I want to see. And I just tweak all the sliders until I get roughly what I would like to see. So it is all a matter of taste. After I'm done with tweaking the colors to my liking, I would copy all the same exact settings adjustments I've done to one image and paste it on every other single frame of this batch of photos. I shot over 30 frames of this one shot to be focused stacked later. So I would want every single one of them to look the same in terms of both exposure, lighting and color. So I am going to get a lot of problems later, mainly artifacts, which can be very difficult to correct. In the stage 2 of editing, we move on to Helicon Focus, which is a software dedicated for focus stacking. So what I did was I would shoot a series of photos with different parts of the, figures in of the figure in focus. And then I would stack them together as one single shot, final result, so the entire figure will be in focus. Yet at the same time, I can remain having, I can retain a blurry background or a nice focal background in the. So that is the main purpose of why I do focus stacking. It is something that you don't see toy photographers do, but it is part of my workflow nowadays. Before is on the left side and after on the right side. So, from what you can appreciate here, the amount of details are greatly boosted. And yeah, yeah, pretty much the whole figure in focus. Before I proceed to show you guys the third stage of Photoshop work, let's discuss about the special effects we'll be adding to a scene like this. So when you photograph a figure like this Jen, you get a dynamic pose and action pose. In this case, she is running, right? Running towards the viewer, the audience, which is us, the, the person who is looking at the figure at the photo. In an action pose, the problem with a photo that is doesn't have any effects, which is what you saw at the end of the focus stacking is that the shot looks pretty static it doesn't look lively but my personal goal is to make a photo that looks more like a scene you would see in anime in movies an action scene so special effects are almost compulsory at this point and this isn't something i do often in fact i think it is my first time adding special effects into my photo since i don't really do heavy handed editing however i'm open to any possible options just to improve my work, to improve and increase the potential of the final result. The big question now, what effects are appropriate? What effects would make my scene look natural? And what shouldn't be added? So, sometimes we have no idea where to start. And if we are too careless with adding random effects, it is just going to make the scene really messy or unnatural. So, what we can do is you can begin by watching anime itself. 
playing games. Magic anime is per- perhaps the best option you can go for because you're shooting an anime figure. My personal benchmark is to watch anime be- made by Ufotable since their animation quality is just gorgeous. And I would take a lot of screenshots. I would even rewatch the same fight scene over and over and inspect the video, the show frame by frame just to pay attention to what effects that could be added to my photos. So yes, I do a lot of study work on films on anime. I'm going to give you guys an example or two here itself. We'll take a look at Fix the Night Heaven's Feel first movie, Presage Flower. Okay, now we have a fight between Saber and Berserker. In this scene, you have Saber dashing towards Berserker. Alright, there you go. So it is a very fast movement scene. But as you pause and slow it down, you rewind it back frame by frame, you see three explosions from the ground where the dust smoke is being sprayed upwards and also debris, large chunks of rocks, which I presume is the floor tiles, eh? the floor tiles. So those three explosions of dust indicate that she made three consecutive leaps or jumps at a very high speed and the force made the ground broke apart. And if we compare it to what I'm doing with Jen, Jen, that is the kind where you will see her running down a flight of stairs. I'm not going to give the viewer an impression of she is leaping forward but rather running down a flight of stairs. So just a bit of dust or smoke and sand particles spewing upwards around her foot would be appropriate but not large explosions of dust like what you're seeing here. And then the second thing to be added is the flash. Alright, regarding flash, in my photo as you saw in the introduction in the beginning of this video, you see that I added a very bright spot near the neck of, a, of the spear she is wielding. That decision wasn't something that came to my mind initially until I rewatched this movie and paused it frame by frame. And I'm going to give you examples again, okay? So now we move, we fast forward a bit. This specific scene right here, where you see Berserker jumping in from the sky and smash Saber into the ground, right? It's a very fast sequence as well, where she made, she made a few spins in the air and smash, boom. Saber got grounded, okay? Now, if I'm going to pause this scene frame by frame, you see a very bright red spot on the blade Berserker is building. That is the light flare that made the scene look so aesthetically pleasing. I wouldn't have noticed it if I did not pause this, right? So if there is a bling, a light source, I mean, if there's a bling, a flare on the weapon, there has to be a light source. But in this scene where they are fighting at night in the park, I'm not even sure where you can find a red colored light source is. So sometimes anime doesn't follow real life logic exactly. But it makes the it makes the scene looks really good. So why not? I'm just going to assume the red flag came from Berserker's own energy because he emit he emits a red colored aura of shock waves, you know, when he fights. So I'm just going to assume it came from there. Now for a second example, which we fast forward the movie a bit further, and you have Saber fighting right the, their first encounter in this movie. So there's one part of this fight where Ryder leaps towards Saber from high up and while swinging her chains. If you pause and roll back the video frames, you also see a flare on her chain, a green colored flare. But in this case, the light source is very obvious. It came from the buildings along the alley. So from these fighting scenes, I came with the conclusion that adding flare effects on bright spots on a metallic surface, especially a weapon, a weapon would be a very good idea. Which is why I added the flare effect on the spear of Jan Dark in my final results via Photoshop. And finally, this uh, there's this slash effect, which I added into the shot, originating from Jan's spear. This horizontal uh, slash effect. It plays a role in composition itself. It is a very good reading line in composition. 
So how do I create this slash effect? Of course, we are just going to assume that I took stock images from online and inserted it directly into this shot. Well, there is nothing wrong with doing that. I used stock image for the sand effects actually. I shot this slash effect on my own. I shot it with my camera. So the technique I used to capture this is called light painting. Light painting is something that anyone with a camera can do as long your camera allows for manual settings, manual exposure. In light painting, you're just going to use a very long exposure or a very slow shutter speed of several seconds. And while the shutter remains open for several seconds, you are just going to swing a light source around like this light stick over here. This is the kind of light stick you'll use in a concert. So while the shutter opens for a few seconds, you'll swing it around in any direction you would like. Sometimes you might have to plan ahead. And at the end of, exposure, of the exposure, you will get light streaks, like pretty much literally painting, right? Painting with light. So these light streaks or light rays, I would extract it later and insert it into this photo of Jen. I would manipulate and shape it until it looks like a slash effect. So in the end, I used only the light stick in white light. Yes, in white light. And I chose a shutter speed of around 4 seconds. I shoot it in the dark in my room itself. And while the shutter opens, I just swing. Slash effect. And you just have to keep repeating it. Try and error. I repeated it for over a dozen times until I got an, uh, a shot that I was satisfied with. And then later on, I would just put it into Photoshop and take the effect out and insert it into Jen's photo. One more thing is I'm going to add a sand dripping effect from the above because we are looking at a scene where the building is crumbling, collapsing. So you will have sand and dust dripping from the above. To do this, you can just look for stock images online, you know, transparent PNG images that are free and can use them without any attributions for non-commercial purposes. So you create a custom Photoshop brush out of the transparent image and I just want to paint it across the upper border of the image. You paint it across the upper border of the image and then you, know, you add various effects like motion blur, Gaussian blur and reduce the opacity since this effect is supposed to be happening in the background and shouldn't be in focus anyway. So you just want a slight foggy effect with signs of movement where sand is dripping down from above. And that is about all the insights I can give you guys on the photography process I went through just to shoot this one single figure. There are no live recordings, video recordings of my editing process into this video because without it, this is already a pretty lengthy one in the first place. Because I had so many things to tell you guys on what I did to create this one shot. However, I'm compiling all the screen recordings and I will join them together and publish it as a separate video. So if you guys are still interested in watching a boring screen recording of all the, my edit, of my editing work, especially the stacking part, yeah, you can check out the link one, once I've published it. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please click subscribe if you like this video and do check out my Facebook and Instagram too. Thank you very much and bye-bye.